Alrighty. I finally got that working. All right. I actually got a question uh, about one of my videos um, from a Twitter user, uh, Kasumi Cat, um, asking what kind of paint I used on my foam feathers um, on my like quick painting video. I actually used quite a few different paints uh, for that. I I used I actually attempted all kinds of layers on um, my first set of feathers, which didn't really work out well anyway. Um, I used an undercoating, a, a rubber undercoating, uh, that is just, it, it's, it's awful. I, I honestly wish I, I probably should probably just get rid of the can because I can't really use it for anything. It's, it's awful. It just peels right off of everything that it touches and it just, it causes foam sheeting to bubble up. It's, it's just not good. <clears throat> and, um, and so I, 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 tried a bunch of different paints on that first before I actually scrapped those feathers and uh, started working with uh, the set that um, I should have as a notation up here to show you that video, the the, fe the quick feather painting video that I made for um, my Kenku, uh, my Kenku's tail feathers, uh, which are just they're just cut from just average craft foam um i didn't get anything i didn't use anything special because uh, feathers are thin they're light and i wanted to use thin light feathers <clears throat> so i didn't get like any special eva foam um that are specifically for cosplay because you can get that in all kinds of widths why spend that kind of money if it's the exact kind of foam anyway that you can just go to the foam section of your craft store and just buy a roll of that instead so that's what i did and um the paints that i used i used a base what did i use as a base i i used a um just a, a, a standard black paint as a base i believe um i but i i purposefully got a sort of a, a a craft paint um i believe it was kind of like i think it was folk arts or or is it plaid one of the two they're the all surface paint um of the all surface acrylic paint that is meant to be used on multiple surfaces that it won't crack it won't chip it won't peel uh which actually i have found is a problem with using foam and uh shoot hodgepodge my brain was not functioning there for a second um a lot of cosplayers use a hodgepodge as sort of a base layer and then they put their acrylic paint on top of it uh they basically the foam kind of soaks up the hodgepodge first creates a seal and then they put their paint on top of that i find that the hodgepodge cracks over time and usually, and, and sometimes it doesn't even take very long at all for it to happen. So I have, I have stopped using hodgepodge in um, any sort of foam application whatsoever. Um, and I've just started using all surface paint. I tried using the VFX paint that is specifically supposed to be for cosplay foam. That's terrible. It's, it's absolutely awful. Um, g give me a minute. Let me, let me actually show you something. So this is um, a, a cosplay sword, foam sword, that I bought at a con. Um, this is, I actually, uh, Riku? Riku from Bleach. Um, I, I bought this as her sword, but it wasn't a bright, the, the top of it wasn't really a bright white. And I wanted to sand down some of these areas and uh, make it a little smoother. Um, and so I kind of, I, I, I just, I specifically bought white VFX paint for it. And let me see if I can actually show you a couple of areas. It might be hard to tell in the light just because I, I put, actually made the lights a little bright. Is this? Mm. Dang it. Let me see if I can turn this down a bit. 
And <sighs> is it just me or are all modern electronics seem to be putting the turn up and turn down spots on lights and speakers in very weird locations? Um, you might be able to spot. Oh, right there. It just, after, after I painted it, and I went and I touched it, and then it just, it started rubbing off. It did, the VFX paint, which is supposed to be for cosplay foam, was just peeling right off of the cosplay foam. And so I thought, maybe it's because this is, this is harder foam? Maybe, maybe it's because it's not, it, it's a little stiff. Maybe that's the reason. So I, and I also let it, I also let it uh, sit for a week because sometimes you do have to let paints and things cure for a week. Always read directions on your bottles. Uh, I actually have an, a uh, flexible glue that can take up to two weeks to cure, which when you're making cosplay items, you have to know because you can't make that at the last minute. You can't use that. You can't use that at, at the last possible minute. It can take it can take up to two weeks to cure. Uh, it actually specifies right on it. Uh, it does become tacky within 30 minutes. However, it takes one to two weeks to cure. Oh, OK. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that was a thing. Um, but yeah, the VFX paint. Uh, I'm actually kind of glad that that has, it, that's kind of disappeared from my local craft store because that, that paint was awful. Honestly, I, I tried using it on, um, some, some just standard PVA foam too, peeled right off. Utterly useless paint. I, I just, I just, I'm just like, I, I've actually been finding reasons to use it. I've, uh, been using it on fabric because it won't crack. So it's basically, it's, it's essentially fabric paint. Um, because it, because, you know, it, it's meant to be absorbed into, into items and, and kind of get sucked up. So I've been using it for fabric paint, but otherwise, um, yeah, I don't, don't ever use VFX paint. I've, I've been using, um, all surface craft paint just go to the craft paint aisle of your local store go through the don't don't by the way don't ever get the super cheap stuff i bought some hmm, when i decided to actually go through all of my craft paint and throw out stuff that was literally 10 years old which was a thing uh and i bought a whole new set i decided to just buy one of those big old value packs of of the super cheap store brand that i will never do that again that was awful oh wow i i can't it was super watery uh it the colors were terrible um it it peeled it cracked it was it was just quite frankly horrible so i have been spending the money and just be buying all service paint it's good for metal wood ceramics all all of the things um i haven't had a problem with it yet uh so i did a base layer of of black on my feathers first. Um, shoot, where are my feathers? Hold on. Oh, there we are. I put, there's a bit of dirt. There's a bit of dirt on my tail feathers from when I actually went to go take some photos. Um, but these are actually uh, my, this is my tail. I've, I've got uh, some cording on it. I didn't really, I thought about adding some, some, smaller feathers up here along with the, the little bit of fur that binds it but because i'm almost always wearing a long tunic anyway you can't see it so i just i just went ah, never mind so um it's there as i said they are actual get it, like it's super thin foam um i did add a bit of texturing to the underside uh this the line here for the ribbing for the feathers is 3D fabric paint. That's all it is. It's just a tiny little line that the little squeezy bottle just go right down the middle, squeeze it super hard up here to create a nice thick rib, and then just just put the teeny tiniest ever little bit down at the bottom to give it to make it look like a, a feathered rib. 
and this is actually kind of what I did to the underside when I put on the the paint. Um, I literally just I I allowed the brush strokes to create the texture of the feather. So this is so that if I you know I jump up, I move. You see the underside of my my Aarakocra's fe tail feathers. They they look like feathers. They they will look like the underside of of the shiny tail feathers. Uh, you will note that there is a little bit more green now. Um, I didn't have some green in it. I was kind of hoping that the paint that I used would actually create that green color that uh, some of the feathers on the crest on my my Aarakocra's head they have the green sheen to them. Unfortunately, the, the paint that I used did not have that green shift to it that I thought it would have. Uh, so I, or at least didn't have the affected shift that I wanted. So I actually had to add uh, green paint to this. Uh, but this is just layers and layers and layers of different kinds of paint. You can really see some of the dirt there. <laughs> um, there are several different kinds of paint. Um, most of them are either by uh, Deco Art or Folk Art. Um, those are the brands. So uh, the first one I'm actually going to talk about is, uh, this was the first one that I bought to use for it. This is called Dragonfly Glaze. Basically what I was going to do was paint the feathers black and then put a color shifting glaze on top of it. Now it the the labels make it look like it's glitter but it nowhere in any of the writing which by the way isn't particularly easy to see because of the holographic sticker on it uh that it it just says color changing top coat it doesn't mention anywhere on this that it contains glitter it contains glitter that's all this is it's fine glitter so the if you can let me see if you can oh there it is right there so this is what it looks like uh this is the color shift violet blue green color shift this is the first one i bought because i thought that this would be that this would be this is exactly what i was looking for i was looking for a paint that color shifted from the black to violet to blue to green the problem is this it's it's glitter it it's just glitter it's just really super fine glitter which is great if that's what you're looking for not what i was looking for uh this was actually one that i bought afterwards uh green red gold shift because <clears throat> i was painting fairy miniatures and i really liked this but it wasn't the color that i wanted so i got this really useful if you want super fine glitter on something not what I wanted for bird feathers so what I got next was color shift this this is I don't think this is called color shift anymore I it's called like iridescent something or other at least it it might be in your region it might be known as iridescent um just iridescent like folk art paint it might in the U.S. still be known as color shift. It's kind of, it's when I do a search, it's kind of hard to tell. I have my entire setup is set to UK English, which occasionally gives me UK words and names of products as opposed to U.S. It also doesn't hurt. It doesn't also doesn't help that I'm also right next to the Canadian border, which if, if you're, if, if that's what this, if that's what the paint is called in your area, it's called just iridescent. Perfect. That's, it's great for you. Um, but when I was actually looking this up online, uh, it might be called something else now. Um, but I bought, uh, the color shift paint. You will see that it is a greeny color, what it looks like in the bottle. Uh, it says, uh, black flash. So I was, I was just kind of hoping that it was just going to be black color shift to green. Not really. It's actually just kind of a dark olive metallic paint, which again, not what I'm looking for. If I wanted to use metallic paint, I have metallic paint. 
So I went and I bought great paint, not what I'm looking for. Um, so, and I went and I got a couple of other color shift colors. Um, I think I have red too. I, I didn't bring that to, to show that, but, um, these are, this is the older bottle. This is the newer bottle. Um, they both say color shift. I don't know. These are both, these are, the color shift is all by folk art. Um, this is actually what the white color shift kind of looks like. It does actually kind of have more of a pearly sheen to it. This is called white flash. When it first dried, it actually, it did have a really great color shift vibe to it. Looked really nice. After it was in storage a while, that the iridescent quality disappeared. You can't even really see it anymore here either. What you're a lot, if you're seeing a lot of flash around it, that's actually what the original, they, they have like these holographic labels on the top to make you think that's actually what it's going to look like. That's not what it's going to look like. So I always, I always put paint on the top to show me what it actually looks like. Like this is what, this is what the paint looks like. That's why this was here to actually show me what the actual, what the paint and the texture of the paint inside the bottle is. You, this, it, it actually just kind of looks like normal white pearly paint. I mean, it has, it still has a great color. There's no color shifting quality about it anymore. So after a couple of years, the, the color shift doesn't seem to actually function so much anymore. Um, I did use this on my tail. Um, it, you, you will notice that there is a bit of a color shift still. Um, I think a lot of that, like some of the areas like around here, I think still have some of this paint. Um, I think I still, I think I may have used that as the base here. Maybe I didn't. Uh, the, the, I had, I added more layers of paint to the feathers as the further they went out. So the back layer has almost n nothing at all. Um, and then just a couple of base colors. That's it. And then this one has more purple and more green. And then the top feather has, the top central feather has more of the colors added to it. Um, again, color shifting property didn't really stick around. It wasn't the color that I wanted. I mean, it looks lovely. It's, it's kind of doing the merge thing between violet and blue, but it, it's still no, st it, I, I need, I needed green. Um, so I just, I kind of watercolor just regular green metallic paint over it. Just dry brushed some, just added some water to my brush, kind of gave it, just kind of like put a thin layer, like watercolor over the top of it as kind of, sort of like a weird top coat kind of a thing. Did that. Um, so I actually found just regular, just layers, thin layers of metallic paint over top of one another, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, that where the light just kind of, depending on how it's turning and how it's moving, um, will sort of determine just how, what color you're actually seeing. Um, I'm I'm a lot happier with it now that I have added the green because I didn't I really didn't I wasn't happy with my tail with without the green it needed the green. Um, so yes, um, that's a, these are actually this is just regular folk art <clears throat> metallic paint. This is emerald green. I think the color I used on that was Christmas green though pretty sure. There really isn't a huge difference between them, honestly. This one just kind of has a sort of kind of a bit of more of a creamy green color as opposed to like a bold green color. I did actually want to uh, touch up on a paint that I, I might have actually been able to use um, as a top coat. I did not. I didn't grab the right color. Um, that is Enchanted. So Enchanted is a, a little more unusual. Um, it is, again, is also an iridescent top coat. Um, this one is by Deco Art, uh, but it is actually more translucent. It is not like an opaque, because this is full on opaque paint. This is not, this is actually more translucent. This is the blue color. Why I bought blue 
when I wanted a green sheen on an anthropomorphic crow costume. I don't know. I don't know why I did that. I, I did it. Don't know why I did it, but I did it. Um, I think it's because I just, I love blues and I just, I had to have blue. I mean, and it, it does have some really nice iridescent sheen to it. Um, again, it does seem to have that iridescent sheen does seem to have faded over time. Um, so I don't, I don't think even over the long term, this will be a great thing. Um, what comes however with this is the base coat so this is actually what is suggested as a base coat in order to make this really pop this is matte black paint and when i say matte black i mean like it it is matte black it is it is like it is super matte black there is i actually i was stunned it it actually says like ultra black base paint there's i have a little dribble of black actually on it on the label now uh but yeah uh it this is super matte black paint fantastic actually when you want something matte black this is amazing this is okay but honestly this this right here is the standout out of all of them like if you want something to be matte black this is this is it um so yeah this is so i so i i actually do need to just kind of go over the paint on here um my i also my sword case i think i also used uh that black paint for because it's this is actually what happened it peeled the the white paint kind of adhered because this was sticky for a long time like it 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 actually felt sticky for a very very long time like months after i applied it and so the it literally stuck to that and i actually you i don't sure if you can entirely see it because i turned oh you can see it a little bit like it just it just peeled right off it rubbed right off it's super thin did not coat well you can actually see the streaks and on on my sword not happy with the vfx paint at all um i'm just not so don't don't ever buy the the plaid vfx paint just get the get the all surface stuff <laughs> that's yeah even when i'm like oh i'll just use it up no no that was that was terrible so yeah that that actually is um the types of paint that i all used um for my tail i i tried a lot of different as i said i tried a lot of different colors and things um because there were so many new products so many new products that i the i there is one thing i will say for the the whole pandemic situation when it comes to crafting there there was such an explosion um with crafting and and the craft market with like so many people just going oh i need something to do and there was just an explosion of things to find that was really kind of nice um but I really am disappointed that the, the color shift paints and things aren't, don't seem to have that color shift over the long term. Like even in this light, like even the liquid paint doesn't really seem to have that color shift quality. I wonder if whatever silica they used in it just kind of broke down, which is unfortunate, but oh well. So, um, uh, sorry, um, let, let me ch check your name again. Uh, Kasumi Cat. Um, those are actually the paints I used. They're just average craft store paints. Um, not super expensive, not super cheap. The right straight down the middle of the road. Um, and the various finishes that I used. Uh, basically, honestly, it was just layers of various metallic paints to create that sort of like watercolor um, finish on my tail.
So there we go. Um, thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, all of that. If you do have any questions, um, I don't necessarily uh, check any questions and things that are on my actual YouTube videos. I don't really check replies at all. Um, I Usually what I do is I'll, a couple of times a year, I'll scan them for any spam, any bots, um, or any just pointlessly stupid comments and things and just delete them. I, I, I don't pay any attention. If you're, if you're trying to get my attention that way, you're not going to. Um, all of the links to social medias where you can find me um, and where I will answer questions are down in the description below. Um, I am most active on YouTube and Tumblr. Um, you can find me at My Little Geekery on both of those places, um, which is actually where I initially answered this question. But I thought maybe I would actually go into more detail and show you what the actual paints looked like, as well as sort of the finished product of my tail and how I created it.